is electric. Good morning, everyone. It's very early. It's still dark outside. It's the beginning of December 2023. Time to update you on how we got on energy and solar wise in November. It's been a great November, in my opinion. Solar overall, not too bad. You'll see that in the stats. But the big one for me is the heating system. Um, we've had our air to air Toshiba heating system, air conditioning system for just over a year now, and we've got used to it. I will do a separate video on um, how it's getting on, but the instantaneous heat that we get from it and how efficient the heat is, I am very, very happy. We've sized it well. It does heat the house really well, and we're extremely capable. I still run it in um, power mode one, and that heats us absolutely fine. You've got lots more power that we could output from it if we wanted to. But as you know, I'm keen to keep those kilowatt hours down um, and be comfortable at the same time. So I think the stats um, for the heating are very, very interesting. I've really enjoyed looking at those. How much more heat have we used than last month, than last year? And how is it looking over the entire year? So that's what I've been doing this month. I've been looking at the stats from a looking back point of view and trying to understand you know, how well are we doing and getting used to it. I'm not, I'm not really worried about the heat in the house today or any other day. Um, it's more about how is that usage converting to how many kilowatt hours we're using. And our kilowatt hour usage is really, really low um, compared to a lot of other people. Mostly it's because there's just Susan and me here now. So there's just two of us. We don't need heating in every single room of the house. Um, we only need heating in the rooms that we're in. And it's very easy to say, okay, it's a cold room. I don't want to go in there or um, I don't want to stay in there very long. But you know, that's fine. Um, we've got one room at the moment. I think it's 11 degrees at the moment. But 11's fine. I'm quite happy with that. It's a room we're not going in. The door's closed. But I'll keep an eye on that. And if that drops too much more, I would turn some heating on or just open a door and let some heat through. Anyway, uh, th there's some detail about heating. What else has been going on this month before I give you the stats? And the big change was that Susan has a new electric car. That's going to change our energy usage statistics because the 64 kilowatt hour battery in the Kia eSoul is going to be really helpful for moving energy from solar into the car, but also lots of charging. What I've noticed with Intelligent Octopus is it's good to be charging. If you're charging your electric car, you get more hours of cheap rate energy. And that means I don't have to be running on the battery at 5.30 in the morning. Um, I can run until 6.30, even 7.30, even later some days. And that's really helpful because it's keeping the battery consumption down. You'll see that in the battery consumption stats compared from this November to last November. It is better than I thought after moving from Octopus Go to Octopus Intelligent. I can see that our battery usage is actually a bit better and I really did not expect that. Anyway, enough of the updates, time for the stats, time for the good stuff, the numbers and the analysis. Let's start by looking at the Octopus Energy app and for the month of November, we've consumed just 500 kilowatt hours. But just using that word just, there's 1,660 kilowatt hours year to date so far. And that's only possible keeping it so low because we're using solar energy for most months. But in the cold months where we need the heating on and we're electric heating, it looks like 500 to 600 is the average for a cold month. 526 in January, 500 in November and about 600 in December. And the cost of those 500 kilowatt hours, a whopping 50 pounds and 23 pence. 99% of which was all at cheap rate, seven and a half pence, just 1% at peak rate, 30 pence. Looking at the daily chart for November, you can see there's four days there where we've hardly used energy at all from the grid. So we were self-sustained on solar power. But most of the other days, we've been pulling from the grid to charge the cars, heat the water, charge the home storage batteries, and of course, power the house. Um, worst day there, it looks like we just uh, crept over 40 kilowatt hours on the, what's that, 19, 20, 21, 20, 22nd of November. So that's our highest usage day so far, 40 kilowatt hours. Solar generation for November was 302.8 kilowatt hours. That's all three of our solar arrays. You can see how low that is by comparison to other months if you look at the very right-hand side of this graph. Looking at the comparison chart to see how this November compared to previous Novembers, well, it's pretty much an average November by the look of it. It's better than last year, which is good news, but not so good as a couple of years before that. 
The one thing I take from this chart is the sad 45 kilowatt hours on the very right hand side of the chart. That's my array with the uh, gable solar panels and the panels over my garage, which are more shaded. This time of year, they're just not as effective as those higher south facing ones on my main roof. I'll quickly show you the day by day charts for the three arrays. If you're interested in this, obviously you can press pause and take a more detailed look. So 45 kilowatt hours for our third array with the gable panels, as I just said. 163 kilowatt hours, that was from our 3.6 kilowatt inverter, 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels on our main roof, south facing. That's the one with the fit tariff that we have. And then Solar Edge, we've got eight panels that make up 2.4 kilowatts of panels, uh, 300 watts each, a two kilowatt inverter, and that generated 94.8 kilowatt hours. The My Energy chart, although the numbers aren't particularly the most accurate, the interesting one there is 34% green. Sounds quite bad, doesn't it? But considering that it's mostly green energy we're importing, I think it's still pretty good. This My Energy chart, though, shows a very useful breakdown of where we've used the energy that we've both imported and generate from solar power. So 81.8 kilowatt hours went to the eddy for heating hot water into our Mixergy hot water tank, uh, 247.5 into the Zappi to charge either the e-Golf that we had at the time or my Mini, and 477.6 kilowatt hours for the house, general house usage, plus that includes battery charging. And if you've forgotten what our battery looks like, this is it with the Pylon Tech batteries. Okay, just kidding. This is our more modest five Pylon Tech batteries, each 3.5 kilowatt hours. Probably the most important chart, this one showing uh, the breakdown of how we use the energy, the energy that's coming from our batteries, from the solar panels, and from the grid. Starting with the biggest consumer at the top, that's the Zappi pulling from the grid, 247 kilowatt hours consumed. The Toshiba air conditioning for our heating is the second biggest, 144 kilowatt hours. The Eddy, uh, 81.7 kilowatt hours. So hopefully these are consistent with what we saw from the My Energy app. The kitchen sockets, that's every socket in the kitchen, including the washing machine and the oven, apart from one hob. The Eddy and Zappi solar numbers aren't relevant anymore because they're included in the grid. There's a mistake there. The ensuite, 26 kilowatt hours. The cloakroom infrared panel, 23 kilowatt hours. These are all heating items. Cloakroom, 21 kilowatt hours. Small room, smaller consumption. The Internet Hub, the My Energy Hub, and the Home Assistant Hub, 16 kilowatt hours. The TV in the lounge, 15 kilowatt hours. The oven and hob, which is actually just one hob now, 13 kilowatt hours. That's the main hob we use. The bathroom heater, just 5.9 kilowatt hours, because we don't normally have heat in there unless we have a guest round. Dehumidifier, I'm struggling to click on that here, but that looks tiny, so 5.55 kilowatt hours for dehumidification. Humidity levels actually seemed quite low in November. Uh, guest heater in the guest room, again, we haven't used it very much, 4 kilowatt hours, that's that round um, infrared mirror. Then laundry, that's a secondary dehumidifier I'm using just for laundry, just 1.44 kilowatt hours, because I've been using that um, all powers battery to do it instead. So my laundry kilowatt hours dehumidification, that's sort of hidden away in the house numbers a little bit. Totaling up just the heating components of that usage comes to 235 kilowatt hours for November 2023 compared to last November just 169 kilowatt hours telling me that yeah it was a lot colder this November. Looking ahead though December 2022 was 298 kilowatt hours. Clearly this month if the weather continues we're going to be using quite a bit more. Temperature monitoring, the bottom one in orange, you can see going down to zero, that's our loft monitor. Then I've got temperatures all the way in between. So the ones in the middle that look cold between 10 and 15, those are the rooms we're not using. Then the rooms we are using more, they're 18, 19, 20, nice and consistently. And if I take away the fluff in the middle so it makes it more obvious, you can see our general rooms that we're using are keeping a nice steady temperature whilst it's freezing cold outside. Export for the month was low at 27.3 kilowatt hours, but obviously there are some days where the sun shines, even in November, and if we're not there and I haven't turned something on and I haven't put any automations in yet for Home Assistant, then I export a little. But 27 kilowatt hours, 
very happy with that. And as soon as Octopus Energy sorts out my export tariff, I won't have to worry about that because I'll be being paid for every kilowatt hour that I export. Hopefully that won't be much longer now before we're actually transferred over in that the Eon tariff that I've got for my deemed export with my fit tariff, that's now gone. I've signed up with a new fit tariff that excludes any deemed export. So that's done and dusted. I've had a final bill from Eon or final invoice of what they're paying me and uh, I'm not going to be getting any more for it. So I'm now not getting paid at all for any export. So hurry up, Octopus Energy, put me on that tariff and get it sorted. The DNO stuff's done, Eon stuff's done. So we're now waiting on you. On to battery use next. Uh, if you remember from watching the other videos, it's the blue at the top that I'm interested in. The fact that there are no dips right at the top shows that we're charging to 100%, apart from the first day in November. But then how far that blue expands down in the right-hand scale, down to 50%, that shows us how much of the battery we're using. So November, I didn't really peak below 50%. Compare that to November last year, and you can see that the blue line there is dropping further down to more 40%. So I'm quite surprised that Octopus Intelligent is allowing us to draw more from the grid than Octopus Go did. And because we're drawing directly from the grid, we're not using the battery. So we're incurring less conversion costs. It's more efficient to draw directly from the grid than draw from energy stored from the grid into the battery. The Shelly monitoring device that I'm using to monitor our air conditioning usage, that's had a change in the app and there's now some more interesting uh, graphs available. This one's showing the month of November. The blue lines there showing how much energy we're consuming from our Toshiba air conditioning units. But the little yellow lines underneath, that's the comparison to the previous period, so the previous month in this case. So as you can see, November using a lot more energy, and right towards the end of the month, yep, energy is rising a lot more as the temperatures drop down to zero and below. I find the annual view, so year to date on this, is a little bit more complicated to get my head around. But looking at the blue, that's showing in November at the right-hand side how much we've used this month compared to the rest of the months but the yellow line that's the year to date from the previous year so it's last year so it's again showing very clearly that november is using more the yellow line is lower uh, on the november piece and in fact we were using less in september and october as well last year so heating wise i'm tending to use it more now now i've got more comfortable with it now i'm not testing it and i'm just using it and know it's cheap uh, i'm freer with that electricity freer with the use of heating and that final yellow line rising up to 197 kilowatt hours tells me what's to come. More heating in December. This graph's interesting. It's from Anglian Water. We've actually got a smart meter on our um, water meter outside, and it measures and gives us app access to how much water we've been using. So mains water from the grid, 4,452 litres this month in November. To my surprise, that's much more than the last few months and probably the second highest month of the year so far. And I really don't know why we've consumed so much water. It does make me think about having the equivalent of a smart plug on all our taps to understand where we're using the water. But of course, I can't have that. But on the subject of water, this graph again showing something interesting. It's showing Home Assistant data tracking how full our hot water tank is, the Mixergy hot water tank. And as you can see there, there's, there's several days where we've got no hot water at all. I've been quite mean and quite um, efficient with our hot water and judged it quite well because we've actually had 50 degree hot water all the times we've wanted it. But some days we've used just that last bit and it's run out. So it hasn't gone lukewarm at all because that's not how the Mixergy tank works. We've still had hot water even when it's really at the very low levels. Even when it's at zero, there's still just a fraction left in there. So I've judged it quite well and hence been quite efficient with our 81.8 kilowatt hours heating hot water. Okay, before I close off the video, one thing I wanted to say was I put out a video recently about the All Powers um, S2000 battery and uh, I raved about it saying how great it was. And as a configuration item, it was and the size and the spec and the usability of it. I mean, I am still using it, but the battery's failed. Um, it's failed with an error code EO8. 09 and it won't power our lawnmower outside anymore but it does power other things i've got a technical query in with all powers to find out what's going on but I've, I've got to say that's now two that's two batteries from all powers i've had and two sort of failures where they're not working as intended so 
my joy of what a wondrous battery it was has changed. So I no longer recommend that battery. So I just wanted to say that in one of my videos. Um, I may well take that battery video down soon because I, I don't think it's representing what my views are anymore. But anyway, I, I will keep plugging ahead with plugging ahead with my Bluetti and EcoFlow batteries, which have been faultless so far. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the statistics and the update there. And please let me know in the comments how you've been getting on and what your plans are. How cold is it especially? And have you got any snow? Here in Norfolk, we don't get any severe weather really, apart from when we had the beast from the east. But other than that, it's always milder than it is further up north. So we do get away with it, which means I can be a little bit more efficient. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Really do enjoy these videos, especially because you like watching them. So you tell me. So please subscribe. We want to get to 20,000 subscribers as soon as possible so that I can do that big giveaway, including that portable battery power station. I want to give one of those away and loads of other stuff as well. So take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.